Hello and welcome to the Tea Party Hardy channel for a review of Season 3, or Series 3 if you prefer, Ghost from BBC. So yes, it's a British program. Alright, now, before I get into a review of the season, let me do a little bit of catch-up for people that don't know what Ghost is. Ghost Star? Hmm. Okay, the crew that is in the show that play the Ghost have been together as a comedy troupe since at least, with my experience, a TV show, again in England, called Horrible Histories. They were the original crew on that show for several years. They worked together, they bonded, they really got along. Their comedi comedic excellence and songwriting skills were superb. It was a humongous hit. The crew that has come in after them, yeah, not so much. No, not really. Anyway, they left Horrible Histories after several years and lots of other guest stars that would weave in and out that worked with them and went on to go and do other things and sometimes return. Very exciting. And so Horrible Histories wrapped up. Then they went on to do a new show called Yonderland, which was an absolute mix between Labyrinth and Monty Python. And I was really, really, really bummed that it didn't come back for series four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten. But the beauty of BBC is you can bring it back whenever they want. That They're weird over there, the way they do things. Anyways, so Yonderland was a, a puppet show, like Labyrinth, mixed with just insane wackiness. And so the troupe went from there, and then they did a movie called Bill, which was the story of William Shakespeare, and it was done in the Horrible Histories style without the humor and songs, and it was not exciting and I was really 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 disappointed because everybody you know who watched Horrible Histories now I came I started with Yonderland and then found out about Horrible Histories and I loved Yonderland and then I seen Horrible Histories and then I actually liked Yonderland less because Horrible Histories was so good but it's like well Yonderland was really good but it wasn't as good as Horrible Histories they were hitting it out of the ballpark on that one so I still love Yonderland but no Horrible Histories is what a product. What a product. So, you get to... They did Bill, and then they did Ghost, and then they did Horrible Histories Romans, another movie. Way better than Bill, but still nothing... You know, The thing about Horrible Histories that made it work is it was little sketches, and it doesn't work in long format. At least it hasn't yet. So now you get to Ghost, Season 1, Season 2, Season 3. Ghost is about a young couple. Uh, let's be let's be specific here. An interracial couple. And does that matter? You know, it, somebody chooses the casting. And it's not like everybody you see out in the world is married to somebody of the opposite. So they're pulling the strings here. Is it woke? No, it's just... It's welcome to the modern world. Where everybody has to be, you know... I've said it before, I'll say it again. If you want to do black people on a show... Have black people on a show. There's nothing wrong with that. Have them be married to black people so that they can keep making little black people and have white people married so they can keep making little white people. Because if you like black people, then you're going to want little black people. And if you like white people, you're going to want little white people. And if you like black people and white people, you're going to want little black people and little white people or you run out of them. Anyway, so the chemistry between the actress and the actor um, as a married couple, yeah, there's none. There's none at all. You wouldn't it, no. If you met them, you would never, ever, ever think they were married. So, yeah, forget about that. But the comedic timing and everything, even though they play in season one and season two, they're the straight ones, and the ghosts get to be the comedy. However, in season three, the husband, he, ooh, he gets he gets to do a lot of, like, of the comedy. And there's one episode that goes into where he finally gets to see them, and it's like, yeah, cool about time i don't think it'll mess up to anything it's not like having a baby on the show that ruins every show and so it plays out the way it plays out so we are in season three the husband gets a lot more comedic roles the wife she remains the straight person as far as the jokes go and they did film this with the cootie virus going on so the restrictions were apparently pretty intense from a, another review i watched from somebody from britain and it's it meant a, a lot less clustering of the actors, which is a show that's got a lot of clustering going on. Anyway, 
the tone for this season was, and I just went and looked back at all the episodes by the title name, because it was like Netflix where it all dropped in one night, and being a fan, I watched the whole thing in one night. The episodes aren't that long, and they're half an hour. So the tone for this one is far, far more serious than one and two. However, it doesn't mean they give up the comedy. Oh, no, 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 no way. It's just they weave together the comedy and the drama the way Brits are really, really good at doing. The only person that I've ever seen come close to it in America, you know, just thinking off the cuff, is is uh, Steve Martin. Steve Martin really knows how to mix the drama with the comedy. Uh, so anyways, so yeah, this one is a lot more intense, but it's still got some wonderful comedy. But the way it turns out in the end, when you conglomerate them all together, is this. The... You feel so much more of a connection to all of the characters in this one than you do in the other seasons. Even though last season, the guy, the camper dude that has the arrow through his neck, he had some really good stuff last season. And so anyways, season three, yes. So if you get a chance to watch it, go for it. There's a bunch on YouTube. Uh, at least they said there was. You know, I didn't click on them, and they're 40 minutes, and like, this show's only 20, and like, you know, I don't know if they're bogus links or not. But anyways, if you get a chance to see it, season one, season two, and season three series, so there's there's only like six or seven episodes in each one, somewhere in that number. And it's very, very fun. If you do get a chance to go back to Horrible Histories, wow! Yeah, wonderful good times with the comedy sketches and stuff. And the music was so wonderful. They haven't brought the music into the new ones. I'm like, kind of bummed about that. And then Yonderland is a real treat as well. The only thing I would tell you about Yonderland is the same thing that I said, which is like, you really want a Series 4 and you're not going to get it yet because it's just fun. It's really fun. And then between Season 1 and Season 2 of Yonderland, they changed the puppets because one of the puppets got rotten according to the behind the scenes and they had to make a new one and it didn't look the same but the way they address it it's like it's really funny but it he he really does look a lot different so ghost do check it out if you get a chance now if you are a bbc fan and you like bbc comedy this is really really should be up your alley it's modern bbc comedy so um it's it it's not and, it, you know, if you watch the stuff going back into the 70s with Benny Hill and Are You Being Served and things like that, no, it's it's nothing like that. It's, it's definitely more modern, and it does have some of the underlying political undertones that are, that are out there. But that's just the world we live in. And if you go back to the 70s, they dealt in Are You Being Served, they dealt with the strikes, and they dealt with Margaret Thatcher, so it's not like... BBC comedies have shied away from politics. It's just, I don't know, maybe it's just different because I was a little kid when those were on, and I'm, that means I'm not a little kid now that these are on. And so it just, it feels a little different. But it's definitely, it's, it's a warm show, and this season in particular is very, very emotional, and it pulls at your heartstrings wonderfully while tickling your funny bone, to use a couple of cliches there. So give it a chance if you get to see it. And we'll see if there's going to be a season four. I don't know what they're going to do about any of these shows with the casting and the clustering because Delta has taught us that it's, we're never getting out of this. And, you know, if you know what's going on down in Australia and in America, it's really, really bad as far as the way the totalitarians are coming in. And New Zealand, where they locked down the whole country for, for one person, one, one person, and they locked down the whole country. Two different islands. So, yeah, there's that issue. Anyways, go season three. Check it out. Check out season one, season two. And season two, I'd say the funniest episode is definitely the one where you find out how the woman died. Because one of the things I like to do is show you how each one died little by little by little throughout the seasons. And it was funny because, like, on the review I was watching before I did this one. I don't normally do that, but I was just wanted to see who was out there doing the ghost thing. She said the most memorable one for her was not like, oh, I totally agree. The most memorable one from season three, without a doubt, is is the camping episode. It's, 
Oh, that one's funny. That one's really funny. Okay, but they're all really enjoyable. Okay, so thank you for watching, and we will see you in the future.